Hey guys, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to take a look at the AMD Radeon RX 6950 XT. Now I've specifically got the Gigabyte uh, gaming OC version, which means it does have a mild overclock on the top. I don't have a, a vanilla, a base spec one or anything like that, but what it does mean is that the vanilla base spec models, the MSRP, is £1,099. So 1099 GBP British Beer Tokens. Uh, the Gigabyte comes in or is meant to be coming in at £1,189, so £90 more expensive. Uh, now, this card is a big, chonky boy. It is thick with a capital C, a little c, and then maybe another capital C as well. It's 330 millimeters long. It is a smidge wider than a standard expansion slot, or like I like to call it, PCI Express slot in the back of a case. But the length is the big thing. It's longer than the standard um, generic AMD PCB by a little bit for extra airflow and loads more cooler. You can see the fin density is quite thick there as well. Um, it's a big, chunky card, so they've obviously been expecting hot temperatures. Now, in reality, I will say, straight from the get-go, in fact, no, yes, no, we'll talk about temperatures. It, I didn't have a problem with the temperatures on this at all, um, and it's been fairly warm in the UK. I normally test at 20 degrees, uh, and it didn't get excessively hot, but the most important thing was is it the card did not get loud either to the point where when I ended up doing some manual fan speed tests to try and do some overclocking, I was quite surprised at like, oh, it can actually be really, really loud. Uh, and during the whole benchmarking session at stock, it was completely like, it. I did not hear it. So it, they've done a very good job with that cooler and the temperatures are a testament to the work they've obviously put in to keep this little puppy cool. Now I say keep the little puppy cool because it makes it sound like the 6950 XT is an upgrade. So we're kind of used to, or there are with the TIs from NVIDIA for example, you normally get like an extra compute unit or something. So it has a little bit more to offer on the architecture side, whereas this is just a bit quicker. It boosts that little bit more and the memory runs that little bit faster. It's effectively like they've been keeping all the best 6900 XTs till last because that's effectively what they're doing. We're at the end of the 6000 series with AMD now. They've speed binned off a few of the good ones and they're being sold a 6950 XT. So it's just, just a clock speed difference within the core itself and a little bit faster clock on the memory. That is it. Uh, and that's kind of where things have fallen into place with the graphs as well. So AMD do do a lot of work with game developers. So there are games out there uh, like B Dirt and F1 2020, for example, that I test that do very, very well with uh, AMD architecture and just the graphics cards in general. They always perform very, very strongly. And sometimes you can even get uh, AMD graphics cards that just trounce the green team. But if you take something like Watch Dogs, for example, uh, and with Watch Dogs, you get a very good mix where you can turn the ray tracing off and then you can turn the ray tracing on. We do need to remember that the 6000 series just was not very strong with ray tracing at all. So if that is something that you're looking at and you think that because it's got a 50 on the end and it's quite late in the day that there's been magical things that have changed, they haven't. Ray tracing for these cards is just not something that you should be thinking that they are capable of to a comparable level to the opposition because they, they go about the task in a completely different way and these they're just it's just best left turning off you can turn it on if the option is there i'd advise not um so ray tracing we'll put that to bed that's kind of put to one side performance wise the it like i said you get the games where the amd stuff is very very strong and then you get the other ones you don't even need ray tracing where it's kind of sat 
above a 3080, but sometimes below the 3080 Ti. And I kind of say that's where it's going to sit. You're gonna get titles that uh, behave a little bit differently. When I bent this one, I didn't bother with 1080p because I don't think you're gonna spend uh, 1,200 pounds on a graphics card and then put it on a 1080p monitor. And obviously with the 1080p monitor, you're then gonna be CPU limited anyway, and it's all gonna be about like uh, competitive stuff. So I've kept it at the gamer end of the spectrum where you are going to be looking to turn your anti-aliasing up, turn things to ultra, and either have a relatively faster 1440p experience or just going balls to the wall for 4K. Although if you have a look on the website, we have done some 8K stuff as well, just because we're trying to get used to it because lots of people are now starting to shout about it for the next gen. Um, so the performance was there or thereabout, but that's something I can't help but kind of feel is that you know you're buying a card late in the day. Maybe you did want a 6900 XT at the start and you've now got some money and you're now looking at the 6950 XT. Feels like it might be a bad time to be investing so much money into older architecture though, because we know they're gonna, or we hope they're gonna bring something amazing to the table for the next realm. And it does feel like they're trying to clear stock, stay that little bit relevant and uh, basically overclock some cards a little bit more than they may have done before and then sell them with a different bracket. Now that's not new for either side of the fence, but sadly I think I probably would have, if you were to give me 1,200 pounds, I've had a look today, and I've managed to find some 3080 Ti's for that sort of money. Um, and I think they deliver more bang for your buck across the realm because of the LSS and the, what they can do with ray tracing. And it's not about whether it's green or red. I'm just purely thinking of 1100 or 1200 pounds. Would I be wanting to buy what's effectively a 6900 XT now? And if I'm completely honest, I don't think I would. And I also don't think I'd advise anyone at home to either. This end of the spectrum with this kind of stuff, with the other ones that they're gonna be doing, like the 6750 and stuff, I think there's a better market for them down at the, um, the other end or in the middle or however you want to word it. I think once you get up to this kind of investment level, you're gonna be buying a card that you're gonna be using for a good few years. I just don't think that there's enough there, unless obviously you're you're, you love your AMD kit and you've got an AMD processor and it's just what you must have, then fair enough. I'm not going to tell you not to. I just have to try and sit on the fence. Uh, and a lot of people say sometimes I get splinters sat on the fence. But I, I, I don't think it would be a wise purchase. At this moment in time, with the uh, market and everything that's going on, I think that we're going to be experiencing some good shifts over the next kind of six to 12 months. So if you want my advice, I'd either personally probably wait it out if you can, unless you've broken your graphics card, wait it out, save some more money, put some money aside and see where we are in a few months time, or maybe possibly look at some other options. Uh, and that's completely down to you. I'm not telling you a specific brand. I'm not telling you a specific like sub brand or whatever. That's just where I'm at. I just, I can't see that this 12, 11, 1200 pound being a good shout right now with the way that the market is and the fact that we do know there are going to be, there is going to be new stuff coming. You can, however, go and have a look on the OC3D website where you can see more um, graphs, including the power that I didn't say because it uses 500 watts. And I actually thought it was going to be worse than that compared to some of the other stuff that we've tested. Uh, I genuinely did. So there you go. It does its job. It does what the 6900 did. But in reality, I think I would have probably have just overclocked a 6900 to within an inch of its life and just loved it. And if you've got a 6900, should you upgrade? Definitely not. Absolutely not. Get brave. Get overclocking. Uh, uh, and if you've got some spare money, maybe upgrade the cooling in your case so that you've got better airflow or a better water, like uh, change it to a water block. Or um, yeah, just try and milk what you can out of the 6900 that you have already. I hope that's not been too confusing. Please like, subscribe, comment, all of that kind of stuff. And I think today that we deserve an internet beer because it's quite nice outside. So I'm actually gonna say an internet shandy in a beer garden. Internet beer garden, that's what we're having today. 
Uh, I'll look for you in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with another one out. And even though it was expensive, sadly, it just wasn't that exciting. It's like 22 degrees outside. My socks are still on. So are my slippers because it wasn't capable of blowing them off. <laughs> TTL out. Love you, sis.